Hi, and welcome to this lecture about display applications. In this lecture, we will be looking more into different types of display technologies. We will especially look at liquid crystal displays and how they function. We will also look at newer technologies such as electronic ink. In electronic ink, small particles will change color, often between black and white. One of the main be benefits of e-ink is that it only takes power when you switch it between one color and the other. Therefore, they draw very, very little power and can lie in the same state for a very long time. They are very suitable for, for, for example, electronic book readers and flexible displays. Welcome to this lecture about display applications. For this lecture, it is recommended that you read chapter 2 and 5 in Printing Technology for Flexible Substrates. Displays is one of the most interesting applications for organic and printed electronics. The target applications is both more advanced displays to replace today's best screens and also low-cost, low-power screens for new products. The most advanced screens are OLED-based and targets to replace today's LCD screens. Here, the target is not to have flexible products, but instead high performance to replace today's TVs and computer monitors. Low-cost, flexible and low-power displays targets a completely different market. The most common are e-ink and electrochromic devices. Organic materials in general and polymers in particular can be used for several parts in flat screen displays, both for the switching transistors and for OLEDs that is used for the pixels themselves. Liquid crystal displays is today the most common display type. The most widely used liquid crystal is called pneumatic liquid crystals. It is characterized by a mesophase in which the molecules of the material are oriented parallel to a preferred direction, called a director. A pixel is made up of two polarizer filters with a liquid crystal in between. Color displays is simply done by adding red, green and blue filters over three separate elements to create a multicolored pixel that changes perceived color depending on the voltage applied to each cell. And here is an example of the NLC pixel operation. To the left we see a schematic showing what happens with the voltage applied. The liquid crystal molecules are then aligned so light cannot pass through polarizer 2, which is rotated 90 degrees compared to polarizer 1. The pixel is off. To the right we show what happens with voltage applied. Here the liquid crystal is twisted 90 degrees so that light can pass through polarizer 2. In this case the pixel is on and light can pass through. To turn pixels on and off, the voltage to them needs to be controlled. For this, different addressing method is used. In direct addressing, all pixels have an individual wire that turns it on and off. It is suitable to use with a small number of pixels, such as for electrochromic displays. When the number of pixels increase, it's not practical to have one wire to each, and therefore matrix addressing is used where each row and column has one electrode and the pixel addressed is at the junction of the electrodes. In pa passive matrix LCDs, the column and row electrodes are connected to the pixels, which is turned on when a voltage is applied to the electrodes corresponding to its location. A drawback is that passive matrix addressing results in reduced contrast ratios and long switching times. Active matrix addressing is used to get the better contrast and higher switching speed. 
and is used in almost all modern displays. When a row is selected, a gate voltage is applied to the selected access transistor, large enough to open the transistor and to operate it in the linear regime. The longest time to charge a pixel can be calculated from the time it takes to charge the storage capacitor from its minimum to its maximum voltage. As the current proceeds to charge the capacitor at the storage node, the gate source as well as the drain source voltage of the pass transistor both decreases. Considering the transistor current equations in the linear regime, the current through the transistor can be written as the following expression, where Vg, Vs and Vd is the voltage at the gate source and drain respectively and Vt is the threshold voltage. In the case that the storage node is charged, the drain side of the transistor is at the column electrode potential. The source voltage will then change from the start voltage to the target voltage at the end of switching. To find the longest possible charging time, it can be assumed that Vd equals Vmax. It can also be assumed that the gate voltage is chosen much higher than Vt plus Vd at all times, so that the equation can be simplified to be the average between minimum voltage and maximum voltage. Current charges the capacitance of the storage node according to the following equation. The charging of the storage node capacitor from a minimum to a maximum value can be estimated to be an exponentially time decreasing process characterized by a time constant. Since the process is exponential, the charging time t increases as the required accuracy to reach a specific value increases. The required time can be expressed as a multiple of the time constant, where t is the total time and a is the accuracy in percentage. To decrease the time constant, the storage capacitor should be small. Other options to decrease sharding time is in the design of the transistor. Sharding is accelerated when the transistor mobility is large, the width length ratio is large and the gate dielectric capacitance per unit area also is large. The important figure of merit to minimize sharding time is therefore the minimum possible channel length and thickness of the gate dielectric. For a display with n rows operating at the frequency of f hertz, the available time to charge each capacitor is given by the following equation. Considering that the main figure of merit is the ratio of mobility to channel length, the required value of mu divided by L is given by the following expression. And now we should look at electrochromic material. Electrochromic material change color with electron transfer by a reduction oxidation reaction. Both inorganic and organic material exists. They can be used in printed display applications. An electrochromic device consists basically of two electrodes, one of which would be transparent with the electrochromic material in between. They have two states of operation, oxidized and reduced, and this results in two colors. Also transparent and one color is possible. They are switched by passing a current through the material. It's possible to make two color system by using two different materials on the electrodes. Electrochromic material is often used for large areas where whole surfaces should change color. They can also be used for smaller displays. Here they must be segmented and the segments individually addressed. When larger displays is made, an active matrix scheme is required to be able to switch the pixels. We should now go over and look at microbead displays. The two main competing techniques is the e-ink and the Juricon. The common feature is that they consist of small beads whose color can be changed by an electric field. The color change is stable 
and only requires a voltage above the threshold when it should be updated. This results in low power consumption, about 10 to 20 times less than for LCD displays. They have a very good contrast and a viewing angle of about 180 degrees. The Yuricon is an invention from Xerox Palo Alto Research Center. They consist of a bead with two different colored halves inside a shell filled with the fluid. When an electric field is applied, they rotate and align the dipole with the field, thus displaying one of the two colors. They can be used in electrically switched reusable paper where an electric field is applied by a printer. Also, they can be used in a display where beads are inserted between patterned electrodes. Electronic ink is an invention from MIT Media Lab. It consists of microcapsules in which pigment particles are encapsulated with a fluid. Two types exist, one with pigment in a liquid dye or two pigments of different color. The particles are positively and negatively charged in case of two colors. In both cases, by applying a voltage, the particles move towards the electrodes, thereby switching the color. When viewed from the top transparent electrode, then one color will be visible. Switching the polarity draw the other colored particles to the top electrode. Alternatively, if dye is used, the color particles are visible or not, depending on the polarity. As to Uricon, e-ink is bi-stable, meaning no power is needed to hold the picture. Currently, the particles are about 100 micrometer in diameter.